Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Coffee and Colorful Conversation. Happy, happy Wednesday. Uh, today, I wanted to first of all thank <clears throat> those of you that follow me on this coffee chat and on social media that uh, supported my first live training this Monday, the 11th. I am so overwhelmed with gratitude for all of the feedback that I have gotten from most of you. Uh, I had 50 people join me on my first training, which that alone was overwhelming. And, and I feel so blessed that people were interested because I've worked a long time to get to the point where I could launch this. So thank you, thank you. And I will be sending the email for the bonus video. I, as you know, if you follow me, you know, I always have tech issues. So I, I was really struggling with trying to shorten the video because I never want to skip a single step, but it can get kind of long watching, you know, someone with long hair get a full new technique. So I apologize for the length and it's a little rough. You know, I had to edit it, but couldn't do it super well. So Future videos will be much more polished. I will be hiring people to help me, but I didn't want to hold you guys up because people are texting me saying, where's the video? Where's the video? So I'm just happy you guys are as excited as I was to share that with you to watch it. So look out for that. I'll be sending you an email. So today I wanted to talk about um, your wow. What is your wow? What is your brand? I had a great thing happened. I was away on vacation and I checked my Facebook messenger and I had a message from someone who I have not seen in literally 20 years, someone that I grew up with, um, great guy. He used to come to my original location, um, my salon that I have closed. It's been closed for probably 15 years now, the first location. And he always came there for a haircut. And when I had my first location, I used to cut color, updos, I did everything. I was not just specializing in color at the time. So when I moved to my new location, him and I lost touch because I no longer did men's haircuts. So my salon, when I moved, still stayed the same name. And I opened my salon when I was 22 years old. So the name of my salon when I was 22 that made me excited and resonated with who I was was Splash, Splash Hair Studio. I had all this 20-something energy and Splash. I thought Splash of Color, you know, that's a cute name. I do a lot of color. So after, you know, 20 years of having that name, I think it might have been 25. It was 20. No, 25. 25 years of the name Splash. When I would do my branding, my business cards, my menu, I kept trying to change the logo to make Splash more fit with where I was in my career, more upscale, more luxury brand. And it just was not working well for me. But my point is the name still stuck with people who've known me forever. So other people had a bigger adjustment when I rebranded about four years ago. I changed the name to Lux Color Lounge because I wanted it to feel very private and very upscale and very loungy and not like any other salon. So what worked for me in resonating more with a current brand was not great as far as branding with keeping in touch with people that I haven't seen in a while. So why I'm sharing this story is, you know, sometimes we post on Instagram or Facebook and sometimes we're like, what can I even write? I have nothing else to put out there. And, you know, you'll put something for myself on my Instagram. I try to balance between my personal and my hair stuff. So my best friend put a post on her Facebook. She's in real estate, so she always tries to get creative with how she can sell the Jersey Shore lifestyle. I'm from Pennsylvania, so our beach is the Jersey Shore, and she lives in one of the nicest parts of the Jersey Shore, Cape May. So we got together for dinner in Cape May for restaurant week, and she put a post up. It was us two eating, and she said, ran into the Lux, uh, the Lux girl in Cape May. So I saw it and I thought it was cute and I didn't think anything of it. So that was probably two weeks ago. She, it came up on her memories and it was restaurant week again and she posted it again. So 
I get this random Facebook message from this guy I haven't seen in 20 years. And he's like, hey, I need to tell you something about your salon. So, of course, you automatically go to, oh, boy, what happened? You know, what did they do? Did they not answer the phone? Did they not call somebody back? Usually, the only time someone reaches out that far, it's something negative. So, I was like, oh, I'm on vacation. I'm at this beautiful rooftop lounge overlooking the um, – sunset. I'm like, I have to answer this guy right now. It's going to drive me crazy. So I wrote back, Hey, what's up? And he's like, do you have a second to call me? And he puts his phone number. So I excuse myself from the restaurant. I go and I call him and he's like, Hey, random. I know you're probably like, what the heck? And I was like, yeah, kind of like I wanted to make sure everything was okay. So he proceeds to tell me a story about how his fiance, now he was married before. Last time I saw him, he was married. Unfortunately, his wife passed away. So Sue Dugan, you're going to know exactly who this is. So his wife passed away and he is now engaged to somebody new who I've never met. So he's like, my fiance, you know, we had this important meeting and she tried to dye her hair herself and she turned it all kinds of orange and she was freaking out because she had this big meeting. So he said, we were at the grocery store near your salon. So when she went on to Google, because she was so close by, when she Googled, you know, best hair color, um, hair color specialist, however she put it in, my salon came up. And he said to her, God, I wish I knew where Elaine went because color was her thing and she would totally hook you up and fix this for you. So there's the wow. Like he knew Elaine's the girl for color, but he knew Elaine from Splash and didn't realize that Lux and Splash were the same person. So his wife sees Lux. She walks into the salon, which we never take walk-ins. And this was back in January. And she, you know, has a hat on and she's very upset. And my front desk um, assistant said, hi, can I help you? And she said, oh my gosh, I screwed up my hair. Is there any way anybody can fix it? So my, I was not there and my other colorist happened to just have a big cancellation. So the assistant said, you know what? We did just have a cancellation. Let me see if it's enough time. So long story short, she took her back. She miraculously fixed her hair. It was amazing. And because it was corrective work and it takes so long, the girl that was doing her color felt bad because she knew nobody ever thinks it's going to take as long as it does for a corrective thing, especially when the person does it themselves. So she was there like two and a half, almost three hours. And the girls in the salon were going to order lunch. And uh, Alicia, the colorist who did this girl's hair, said, hey, you've been here a while. Can I, can I get you a salad? We're all ordering salads. And she was like, oh, my gosh, yeah. Like, can I Apple pay you? Like, how, you know, I want to pay you for it. And she was like, no, no, no. Don't worry about it. I, have, I got it. So she bought her, um, her lunch while she was there getting this disaster fix. So that was back in January. She has since been to the salon another time, had a great experience, still has no idea that it's my salon or has anything to do with me. So her fiance is on Facebook, sees my friend's post, ran into the Lux girl, you know, in Cape May. He puts two and two together and calls me and says, I just want to tell you, like, I felt so bad when my fiance went to this new fancy pants salon in Conshohocken to get her hair color fixed. I felt like I was cheating on you, you know, sending her somewhere else. She came home raving over it and is like so happy that she found that salon and she loves it. And he said, and then I see the post about Elaine as the Lux girl. So now I understand that it's your salon and I put it all together and oh my God, isn't that unbelievable? So his fiance gets on the phone and, and her hair was so bad and so orange and, you know, Alicia saved the day and fixed her color, but she spent 20 minutes talking to me about this salad, you know? So the salad was probably like $10, you know, her hair was probably 300. So she wasn't, wrapped up in, oh my gosh, I just spent $300 on my hair. She was so grateful that it was able to be fixed, but she was so wowed by the salad. 
it was the salad. It wasn't the hair rescue. It wasn't that her hair was still healthy after she went through all that. It wasn't that, you know, she was there for three hours and was pissed off because it took so long. She could not stop talking about the salad. So two big wows in this chat. The wow factor of the fact that he figured that all out through a friend's post about me having dinner in Cape May. You know, wh what are the odds of that? And the fact that he felt so much better that he was loyal to me and my brand. He didn't even care that I didn't physically do the girl's hair. He was so excited that he was able to support Elaine, the color specialist that he's known his whole life. So I thought that was a great story to share. And just to remind you that, you know, when a client comes in, you know, I go get my nails done and they have this um, big jug of water that has different fruit each time I go, you know, lemons and limes one day, oranges and strawberries another day. I never drink enough water and it's something that I'm trying to work on and I have to force myself to drink it. So when I'm on my way there, I think, oh good, I'm going to get, you know, two, three glasses of water in me because their water tastes so good. But it's so inconsistent. One time I go and they immediately offer it to me. The next time I go, they offer me nothing. The next time I go, I want coffee. I have to ask for it. So just pay attention to those little details. It costs you nothing. It's all about the customer service. And people have an expectation when they're treated a certain way. One time they come see you, they expect to be treated that certain way when they come again and again and again, and they get accustomed to that level of service. So always protect your brand, always give the wow factor, no matter what. One of the things that I learned at a seminar years ago from John DeJulius. If you're not familiar with John DeJulius, he has an amazing book called Secret Service. I think you can still get it on Amazon. And I've gone to see him live several times. He's an amazing speaker. And he's really good at making people feel really VIP in, in no cost or low cost ways. So one of his things was... Um, you know, when a client is going to a wedding and they're in your chair and they're getting their hair done and they, they're frazzled, like my hair is right now, um, they're frazzled trying to get to the wedding on time and they try to squeeze in a blowout at your salon and the whole time they're sitting there, they're thinking about the card that they didn't get to take to the wedding. So having a drawer with, you know, a generic wedding card, a generic First Holy Communion card, a generic baby shower card, you know, whatever occasion you can think of that a client might be frazzled trying to get that done before they go to the event makes a huge impression. You know, hey, I knew you were going to be rushed. I picked this up. You know, I hope it helps. They're like, whoa. And what's a card at the dollar store? A dollar. Um, another thing that we do um, that's different is I had brand it umbrellas made, little, you know, pocketbook size umbrellas. We have so many clients who rain. I'm not a check the forecast kind of person. If it rains, it rains. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I never know when it's going to rain. So we've had women come and get their hair done and it looks gorgeous. And then they hear the rumble outside and they're like, oh crap. And you can just see the look of panic on their face. So we used to um, just have someone walk them out to their car, which is that that's huge customer service, walking them out to their car. And then I was like, you know what? That person, if you're anything like me, your umbrella is always in your car. So you have to walk in the rain to get to your umbrella to get dry for the next trip. So I had these umbrellas made. They were not super expensive. I mean, they weren't cheap, but they weren't super expensive. And I, I have a handful of them in the salon. And when a client has that situation where they're stuck and it starts to rain, not only do they get another umbrella, but it has my brand on the umbrella. So now everywhere they go, when they get stuck in the rain and they push that umbrella up, people see my brand wherever they are and think, oh, wow, that's kind of cool. So just always have a wow, always go above and beyond, you know, be consistent with your beverage service, with, you know, you know, clean, fluffy towels, clean robes, no lint on the robes. If a robe gets a hole in it, throw it away. You know, step it up. It's very competitive out there. The salon industry is completely changing. So I just wanted to share all that. And for those of you that missed my online training, I had so much great feedback. I am going to offer it again in a few weeks. So 
stay tuned for that on this page. I'll have the link to the live training, Secrets of Celebrity Colorists. I, I can't even believe the great feedback that I got. So it was a great class. People really learned a lot. Someone wrote to me and said they had four pages of notes. I love that. I love hearing that. So um, please join me if you missed it. Um, and everyone have a great day. And I will see you on the next Coffee and Colorful Conversation. Have a good one. Take care, guys.